Hello everyone and welcome to the captain's video web blog. Jesus. Uh, we are Monday, <laughs> December the 12th, 2016. We are at the beginning of the third hour of Raw and I'll talk about Raw later, but let's talk about a bit of wrestling. So one thing I forgot to mention is the new member of the Bullet Club. You know, Kenny Omega tweeted about this uh, like a week ago. Uh, new new bullet, mem bullet Club member, he's a devourer of promotions, a uh, nightmare, yeah. Turns out it's Cody Rhodes. <laughs> well, I mean, only Cody. Uh, apparently the Rhodes thing still not okay with the WWE. Should have thought about that earlier, Cody. Uh, but yeah, Cody Rhodes, uh, only known as Cody, the American Nightmare, will be the new member of the Bullet Club. Uh, debut Will debut as a member of the Bullet Club in New Japan at Wrestle Kingdom 11, the same night that Kenny Omega defends his match, uh, he uh, faces Kazuchika Okada for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship in what could be one of the greatest, greatest matches for uh, for a year in New Japan, like KO versus KO, wonderful. Only, you know, if they had Kevin Owens in that, it would be a KO triple threat. Uh, with uh, maybe two titles on the line, but I get sidetracked. So people are re already, you know, getting, you know, saying that yeah, Cody Rhodes is overrated and uh, uh, was because of his father. Uh, he's just riding the wave of his popularity in WWE. Uh, it's just nothing to do on the Indies. Burr, 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 burr. Come on, come on. <laughs> this is pretty much the concept of the Bullet Club in the USA. To be quite honest. Have you seen the reaction that Kyle O'Reilly got when he won the World Ring of Honor World Championship? Yeah, uh, it wouldn't have happened if he hadn't won it from Adam Cole, member of the Bullet Club. I mean, no disrespect meant to Adam Cole, he's a great wrestler in his own respect, but I mean, <laughs> would people care that much about him uh, losing the title to Kyle O'Reilly? Uh, you know, would people have not cheered more Carol Rally if Adam Cole hadn't been part of the Bullet Club. <laughs> I don't know, I think that uh, KOR is just one of the greatest to have never held that title and that it was long overdue for him. Though, you know, just he's more of a tag wrestler, but yeah, still, just... Uh, just, yeah, I mean, the Young Bucks, they're great, they, they are great. Uh, the the guerrillas of destiny they are great Kenny Omega he's great he's amazing one of the greatest foreigners uh, heel or face ever and uh, yeah but it's just that in the US oh super kid party woo hoo uh, just <sighs> smarks I guess you know and just yeah this will say a little bit annoying but they ha they are having good fun. And then you have the super kicks party, super kick parties. Huh, fifty one super kicks. Jesus Christ! Pfft. Like, oh boy, this is getting a bit stale, isn't it? Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, maybe, I, maybe not. Actually, when I think about it. So anyway, yeah, I'm actually a bit tired. I thought that I was tired anyway, but I realized that even my body is sending me pretty strong signals about that. Yeah, I hadn't realized that my eyes were that bloodshot and just, oh god, it's just so dark under my eyes. <laughs> I, I slept for just about four hours last night. I uh, woke up a little bit around, a little bit around, a little bit past 11 a.m. Um, and then I stayed in on my back, in my bed, for like six hours, waiting for my phone to be completely completely charged. Now, I know what usually that entails. That entails that, yeah, um, I don't do anything productive. And to be fair, I only had two things to do yesterday. You had one, a phone call, and two, an application letter. Turns out that actually one thing, only one thing needed, needed to be done. It was the phone call. I called them to know when there would be the uh, answers, you know, when we would know if we were taken or not. And uh, they pretty much told me that uh, despite the fact that it <laughs> that uh, like three days remain, well, they already have found the the right person for the internship, and they made it pretty clear that even if I had sent if I had sent my application during the day, uh, it wouldn't it would have been worthless by telling me before hanging up. Uh, good luck, where 
well, for for your your quest pretty much of finding your internship and I was like okay sure yeah <laughs> I guess so you know the thing about my internship is that I have like two criteria uh, the, the first one being that it, sh it should be uh, I mean I won't get you know all greasy if uh, it's not but I, I like an internship in the, in the field of, of transportation it's it's not a thing that there's a uh, that is very frequent, you know. Uh, most often, it's just job offers, not internship offers, and it's just like, oh well. And uh, the other criteria, uh, criteria is like uh, that it doesn't uh, require to have the driver's license because first off, I don't have the driver's license, and second, even if I did, it's just you know when there's this kind of internship, it's not about being stubborn or. Or being, you know, just mm, I don't like driving and all that. It's just that I don't want my my internship to have any kind of chance of, uh, you know, I don't want to have any kind of risk of failing my internship and not get my diploma because of something that is completely irrelevant to the things I studied for at this point three years nearly. Uh, <laughs> Uh, y you know, driving isn't really something that you learn in your classes at university. You wouldn't believe that, but it's actually the truth. And the worst thing about it is that most of those internships are in national parks. So that means that, you know, you, know, you go on, on the field to gather some data. But it also, also means that it's the nature. It's not often very good roads to what about I, what if I get off road? What if a boar or, or, or a deer just happens to be in the middle of the road and you know even if I honk it doesn't move and I have to swerve into a ditch or into a tree and just uh, bah, bah, once again you know it's so many so many events that you know I'm thinking of the most extreme ones uh, but it just could be well I mean my, my car is out of gas and uh, the closest pump is like 15 kilometers away so I guess I'm fucked for tonight um, but anything you know, can, could really, uh, you know, anything surrounding the car could really make me fail my internship, and I don't want that. You know, the something that I didn't study for to be the cause of me failing my just my the last of my challenges. I mean, for now, I could still <laughs> try to get a PhD later in my life, but that's not one of my goals currently. So yeah. Um, what else? Just, I mean, I know that when I I'll actually have a job, it will be uh, unavoidable uh, to to drive around. But I mean, I don't care really. Later is later, and now is now. That's pretty much it. If I want to have the choice not to drive for my internship. I want to be able to make that choice, and that's really important to me. And uh, yeah, that's essentially why I'm fucked. Um, anyway, uh, let's talk a bit about football because Marte is playing against Socho. So essentially, the same players as as for Dijon had been have been called besides uh, Rodfani because too many yellow cards. Um, and uh, yeah, essentially, Bubakar uh, Kamara could be playing which would be good I mean he's a young very promising player you know 16 years old and already the captain of the reserve team that's really good uh, so yeah uh, just hopes that uh, against Socho you know a team that's very competitive won to Dijon actually uh, with a clean sheet uh, which is something that we haven't been able to do against Dijon um, and they are a leader team <sighs> just could be really interesting uh, especially in an away match besides that there's been the draws for both the uh, the Europa League and the Champions League no round of 16 round of 32 well round of 16 for the Champions League so Paris is facing Barcelona because after four years of not advancing further than the quarterfinals well uh, the UEFA or whatever it's actually supposed to be pronounced because apparently it's not you're not supposed to say the letters out loud um, which is strange uh, they have decided to pull the plug on Paris you know they're like yeah but 
you know, you looked like you could advance further than the quarterfinals and you didn't do it. Uh, and uh, therefore, you know, this year, Barcelona, I mean, it's it's a draw, it's the lottery, but it's much, it's so much funnier to, to think, hey, Bayern and Arsenal are qualified for a round of 16. Well, let's put them in a, against each other for the fourth time in a row. Ha, ha, ha. And uh, yeah, uh, also... Monaco is facing Manchester City, could, which uh, right now could could be uh, could look like a match that uh, you know a um, a, uh, a confrontation that uh, Monaco could uh, get out uh, with uh, with the qualification. But then again, we'll have to see how City looks around you know the turn of the year, like Boxing Day and all that, to see how they will fare in the their European prospects in the second part of the season. And uh, same for Monaco, but in the French Cup. So, yeah, a start of January. Um, speaking of that, I actually probably go watch Toulouse versus Marseille on d uh, January the eighth uh, because it's in the middle of the afternoon, so I actually can go there. Um, yeah, and in Europe League, uh, Lyon faces AZ Alkmaar, a club from the Netherlands, and uh, Saint Etienne has <laughs> pretty pretty much fucked because they are facing well Manchester United so now Manchester United don't look that good but they have Ibrahimovic uh, and in like 14 uh, 13 games against Saint Etienne he scored 14 times so yeah uh, so essentially what I'm, I'm trying to get at is that the French uh, UEFA coefficient index is going to take a huge hit this year and uh, yeah, if any Faris had finished uh, first, well, they would have been the ones to take uh, Bayern Munich. So well, I mean, they were fucked anyway. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hmm. There was the interview of Frank Passy, and they always try. They all through the the thing they tried to make him talk shit about uh, the new owners, and he was like, "Yeah, you know, the, the the problem with the lawyer was between the lawyers. They didn't reach an agreement, so." had a meeting with the new president and it all, all went fine and things worked out great and uh, yeah basically it was all that I mean the only things that going to start, start some shit is uh, about L'Equipe and uh, and Dafé Gomis and all that Maxime Lopez but then again you know L'Equipe French football and all that it's just not good I mean Cristiano Ronaldo Ballon d'Or fucking hell anyway thanks for watching see you tomorrow bye bye